Today we're going to dive in and take a quick look on how to set up AOV groups inside Cinema 4D. For more information on these AOVs, check out the Octane Render Support Guides for in-depth render AOV and post-production information. Let's jump in. Once you're ready to start compositing, we're going to need to enable a few things. First, open up your render settings. From the Octane Render tab, head over to Render AOV Manager and click the Enable button. This allows us access to all the render AOVs inside Octane Render. As you can see, I have quite a few enabled already. For a few specific AOVs, we need to enable them here, so we have access inside the AOV groups later. For example, CryptoMap and ZDepth need to be enabled here, and we'll have all of our settings and parameters to adjust those here as well. To add them, simply click Add Render AOV. From the drop-down, we can select the AOVs we need. Now that we're ready, we can head over to the AOV Output Compositor. Here you'll have the option to add inputs for AOV groups. I've already renamed and added my master output. If we open this group, we'll see all of our layer groups nested inside this one large master group. Let's open the node editor and see what this means. Before diving deeper into the nodes, let's find a few ways on how we can access this viewport. If we go to the render settings, we can always click on node editor. Or if we're already inside of a material, we can click on the render AOVs button at the top of the graph. Now that we know how to enable the render AOVs and we know how to get to the node graph, let's dive into the nodes. From our output group, this is where we stack layer groups. This is where all the magic happens. It's important that the hierarchy starts at the bottom and works its way upwards. In the render preview, you'll see our output one highlighted. This signifies the visibility of our output composite group. If we detach all layer groups, you'll see there's no content. And then with just the beauty pass plugged in, our main render and our output AOV are the exact same. From here, it's best to work with additional layers for order of operations. We can also stack open image denoising nodes onto everything. Using additional layer groups will have access to blend modes as well. In this case, I'm using a diffuse filter AOV pass on a separate layer group. With a diffuse filter, I can overlay the diffuse color back on top of everything. With an adjust opacity node, I can adjust the opacity of the influence of the layer group. In conjunction with the opacity, we can also mask with the crypto mat. This is why we enabled the crypto mat earlier. Inside the mask with crypto mat node, we'll see the type. The type has to correspond with the type we selected earlier in the render AOV. With the blue crypto mat eyedropper selected, we can simply click on the objects we want to include directly inside the live viewer. You'll see the CryptoMap mask includes them in the list. You could also drag and drop the objects in manually. This is a great way to mask compositing functions only to certain objects or certain materials, and you get to experience it in real time. You'll see all the render AOVs we set from earlier also in the node graph. These can't be used in conjunction with the output AOVs, so we just move them aside. Next, let's add another layer group. In this case, we're using a light pass ID with an open image denoise and an opacity slider. Now let's add a more complex operation. One of the newest features added is texture AOV compositing. This allows us to pretty much use anything as a source input. Images and textures, capture AOV inputs, image sequences, procedural noises, OSL scripts, and much more. Here we're creating a fake fog effect using our Z-depth AOV that we enabled earlier with a selective mask made from procedural noises. What's great is we could use this either as a mask or as a composite element itself. In this case, we're gonna use our Z depth pass and composite as a mask. From here, you can see there's so much room to do more and experiment. But what about final touches? Let's add another layer group and consider post effects. With order of operations in mind, last minute touches and color transforms can usually be held off till the end. This is why I designate a whole layer group just for those adjustments. Here I can add in one or many of the LUTs we all know and love from Cinema 4D and Octane. Next we can adjust for AGX or ACES transforms. We could also add some chromatic aberration we can finish off with a little bit of vignette.
remember to keep your nodes organized and tidy for efficiency. You can also use the comment node to nest layer groups together, giving them descriptions, titles, colors, and more. AOV compositing allows you to become more creative and establish a unique aesthetic. Try it out today inside Octane Render.